of the Lake Circle Tour will just touch on 16 of the most interesting stops along its route. Our future shows here will break these down into more depth and look at them by subjects such as nature, history, and recreation. We better get started on today's trips because we have a lot to cover in a very short period of time. We will base ourselves in Manistique where so much of our tour will take place and Manistique is one of the only areas along our tour where you can find food and lodging. We will start our tour about 15 miles east of Manistique in Schoolcraft County. Sichua Point is a small harbor on northern Lake Michigan and is located on the south shore of the Upper Peninsula. Native Americans and French fur traders traveling in canoes across the rough waters of Lake Michigan found this harbor to be the only refuge between St. Ignace and Manistique. The French gave it its name, which means only choice. The 96-step spiral staircase can be a challenge to climb to the top, but the view is spectacular. On a clear day, you can see all the way to the Beaver Islands, and on most days, you can see for miles down the rugged coastline as it drifts off into the distance. Moving on to our next destination, the Sini Wildlife Refuge. In 1935, Sini National Wildlife Refuge was established as a refuge and breeding ground for migratory birds and other wildlife. Today, Sini supports a variety of wildlife including endangered and reintroduced species. Bald eagle, common loon, and trumpeter swans are regularly seen during the summer months, especially June and July when they're raising their young. Sandhill cranes can be observed in moderate numbers prior to fall migration. The visitor center is open from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. May 15th to October 15th. At the visitor center you can explore the children's touch table and interactive exhibits, watch the multi-projector orientation slideshow, and shop for books and souvenirs in the Sini Natural History Association's bookstore. The Marshland Wildlife Drive is a self-guided seven-mile-long auto tour and is open during the daylight hours from May 15th through October 15th. Observation decks offer wheelchair accessible scopes to view wildlife on the pools. Pine Ridge Nature Trail is open year-round during the daylight hours. The 1.2-mile trail starts at the visitor center and takes visitors through a wide variety of habitats. Trails are only open during the daylight hours, so you need to plan your trip carefully. Biking is a wonderful way to see the refuge because you can travel through large portions of the backcountry. All refuge roads are open to bicycles, but the refuge manager may close some during peak migrations. The Colwell Lake Recreation Area is located at the northern end of Schoolcraft County, about 25 miles northwest of Manistique. The area lies adjacent to State Highway M94 and Federal Road 2246. Colwell Lake is 145 acres with excellent swimming beach and boat access. Camping, fishing, picnicking, and hiking are all popular recreational activities at Colwell Lake. We will follow the lakeside path around the lake. If you are a day packer and are looking for a great spot for a picnic, this is the perfect place. The Caldwell Lake Trail begins at the boat launch parking lot. This natural surface nature trail is 1.6 miles long and crosses through a variety of northern hardwood stands and wetlands. The trail has several areas where stairs or plank boardwalks are traversed. If you like to fish, this is another great fall fishing getaway. The fish found at Caldwell Lake are northern pike, largemouth bass, bluegill, pumpkin seed, black crappie, and perch. There is a boat ramp and launching pier located near the campground entrance, and there is adequate space for parking and a trailer turnaround exist. Don't worry about supplies, there is a convenience store with gasoline and restaurant located in Shingleton, 10 miles north of the campground at the intersection of M94 and M28. Caldwell Lake Campground is a fee site. Golden Age and Golden Access Passports are honored. Pine Martin Run is a 26 mile system of hiking and horseback riding trails located in the Iron Jaw semi-primitive area approximately 30 miles northwest of Manistique in Schoolcraft County. Pine Martin Run is composed of five loop trails with interconnecting spurs. 
The trails pass through a wide variety of vegetative communities as they meander past lakes and streams, gently rolling hills, bogs, and wildlife openings. Parking areas are suited for vehicles with horse trailers and are available at each trailhead. And Adirondack shelters with fire rings have been constructed on Rim Lake, Rummel Lake, and along the Indian River. Ashford Lake Pathway is known more for its cross-country skiing than it is for its summer and fall hiking. But that's okay because it means it's another secret that only a few know about. We couldn't find a lot of information on it, but we did find a map hidden away in some of our old obscure documents that we had from years ago. I'm sure it's a busy place in the winter, or as busy as anything gets in this part of the wilderness. But there's no one around today, and some of the discoveries we would find make it that much more exciting. This might be one of the more rustic trails that you go on. Uh, as a matter of fact, we're not even sure where it's at yet. We think we found it. It looks like a two-track that uh, is running down here, and I think it runs out and around the lake. It is how it changes, how the trees change. We we're just coming through the hardwoods, the birches, and so forth, and we've come into an area where it's all pines, and it turns all green on us again. But just these changes are what make the uniqueness of this trail so nice. And, of course, you're always walking along next to the creek, at least through this area. And so it's... A, it's a nice area. There's a huge hemlock out behind me here. I didn't know if you can see that in the background or not, but there's um, some very interesting trees out here. Okay, as you look across the lake here, you can see the launch that's on the other side. That's actually where we started from. That's where we're parked at. Now we started out from there. We went to the south, which is down to your left. And uh, we, of course, that was a dead end, so we went back, went to the right, and we've actually come all the way around the lake. I'm surprised we got this far back. It didn't seem like we walked that far, but we are all the way around the other side of the lake and almost down to the, the back end of it here, so we've come quite a ways. Great little hike coming out here. Just a few miles further north on Indian Lake, we would come to the Brainy Nature Preserve. We added this to our trip to give you a hint of what was still to come. Keep your eyes open as you're walking along the pathways too, and you'll just see small signs like this that just kind of identify some of the things that are along the trail. This is the yellow birch, this one right here, and you can actually see a yellow cast to it. And uh, that one's been here for a while. You'll notice too that this is kind of a swampy area. We're on a boardwalk, and uh, it'll drop down off the boardwalk and go onto a pathway again down here. A hiking trail that passes through maple, yellow birch, and mixed conifer habitats takes you over boardwalks and through wet areas, leading to an elevated observation platform that provides a feeling of remoteness and outstanding opportunities for viewing wildlife. Well, we're at the top of the platform out here. It's actually pretty easy to get out here. It's really just a short walk. Uh, there's a ramp that comes halfway up, and then there's just a few stairs that come up to the top here. Actually, as we were coming up here, uh, unfortunately I spotted them too late, but there was an eagle actually setting up here uh, on one of these posts and took off just as we came up on it and uh, took off into the woods out that way. You can see out behind me here, though, this is Smith Creek out here. Uh, it runs right into Indian River, which is located right over here. Um, excuse me, Indian Lake, which you can see over here. Uh, the creek runs up. It's actually a trout stream further up. If you get up into the tree line over here, it narrows down and then you get into your trout waters. But in through here, you can actually get a boat up in there. And I imagine at certain times of the year, you're going to get fish out of the lake that come up here to spawn. The next stop on our circle tour will take us to a reverend place, the Father Berigo Shrine, located on Indian Lake. It was the perfect stop for a fall trip. The weather was beautiful and the history of the site was overwhelming. Time has only changed this area slightly. Some areas look as if time has stood still. Father Frederick Berriga was called the Apostle of the Ottawa and Chippewas. Berriga was born and trained in Europe. He arrived in 1830 to begin his work. During his lifetime, Father Berriga founded many missions in northern Michigan. The original Indian Lake Mission, the third of Berriga's faith, was built in anticipation of his first visit to the area in May of 1832. The chapel used by the local Chippewas used traditional Indian construction methods and materials such as logs and bark. The Indians replaced the first chapel with a larger one in 1833. Records suggest that the chapel may have existed until 1873. 
Based on historical information, the Indian Lake Mission was rebuilt in the early 1980s on the original mission site. The little huts on top of the burial site are where the natives would put the things that the deceased would need in the next life, such as his favorite moccasins and honey knife, along with tobacco that was thought to have special powers. Until his death in 1868, Father Berriga labored unselfishly in an area from northern Minnesota to Sault Ste. Marie. With this area being covered by snow 70% of the year, he would make most of his treks on snowshoes and become known as the Snowshoe Priest. Indian Lake State Park is located on Indian Lake, the fourth largest inland lake in the Upper Peninsula with an area of 8,400 acres. It is six miles long and three miles wide. According to 1850 surveyor records, Native Americans lived in log cabins near the outlet of the lake. The park is composed of two units which are three miles apart and separated by the waters of Indian Lake. Original land acquisition at the South Shore was in 1932 and development began in 1933 using the CCC and the WPA labor. The original acquisition of the land on the West Shore was in 1939. However, development did not begin until 1965. The area around Indian Lake State Park is a playground for the sportsmen and outdoor recreationists. Palms Book State Park is located at the northern terminus of State Highway 149, a 15-minute drive north of US-2 at Thompson. It's a rewarding side trip for the vacationer touring the Upper Peninsula, for here you can see one of Michigan's alluring natural attractions, Kichitakippi, the Big Spring. The Big Spring is the largest in Michigan, 40 feet deep and over 10,000 gallons of clear water gush per minute from the fissures in the underlying limestone. At the springs you are greeted by a new, more modern raft that has replaced the older, smaller raft that has served the spring for almost 60 years. Fayette, located on the Garden Peninsula at Snail Shell Harbor, was once one of Upper Peninsula's most productive iron smelting operations. When the charcoal iron market began to decline in 1891, the Jackson Iron Company closed its Fayette smelting operation. It is now a completely restored village including 22 historic buildings, museum exhibits and the visitor center which can be toured from May through October. The historic site is located in the Fayette State Park. Today, Fayette Historic Town Site is a living museum with many restored buildings. Visitors may walk through the buildings and learn about the life in Fayette during the late 1800s. Over 20 buildings are open with restoration continuing on other parts of the town. Moving on to stop number 11, we find ourselves back on Lake Michigan. This area has always been famous for the amount of forest and its pine trees and has been a preference for Christmas trees. Well, this wasn't always a good thing. Well, we're now standing on the shores of Lake Michigan and we've got the perfect day for what we're looking at right now. We're in the town of Thompson, or very close to what's left of it. There are a few buildings out behind me that uh, are still visible that uh, have lasted over the years, a lot of old foundations and, and some of the old docks that were out here. And it looks like nothing right now, but at one time this was a bustling town. It had four lumber mills here and there were ships going in and out constantly. It was actually larger than the town of Manistique. A schooner called the Rose Simmons left here in 1912 for a trip down to Chicago full of Christmas trees. Although this vessel was used primarily to haul lumber, the last trip of the season was reserved for bringing Christmas trees to his home port of Chicago. During the late afternoon of November 22, 1912, the captain gave orders to depart the Thompson docks with the Rouse Simmons filled with Christmas trees. Those watching on shore and many of the crew warned the captain not to set sail. Yet the captain pressed on. His decision would be fatal. The Rouse Simmons sank off the coast of Two Rivers, Wisconsin. All hands were lost. What makes that an interesting story, of course, is the fact that all the Christmas trees came from up here in the UP and were sent down to Chicago for all those great people. And they, they loved it. His wife actually kept it up until the 1930s. So it went on for a long time. But this monument sets out here. There's a lot of plaques out here that explain what went on and, and something about the town of Thompson and, and also a little bit about the tour that we're taking. So it's a great little place to stop off, look out on Lake Michigan. Hey, another interesting point about the area is we are right down from the Thompson Creek Fish Hatchery here. The Thompson Creek runs out behind me. 
happening here. And a lot of the people, the creek itself is small, but a lot of the fish have escaped out of there and gone out and, and grown out into the Great Lakes, and then they come back into this area to spawn. So you'll see a lot of fishermen come down here in the fall, and they'll line these shorelines out there surf fishing for these big salmon that come in. So, hey, if you're into fishing, you might want to come here just for that. Stop number 12 is the Thompson Fish Hatchery. It's located about eight miles west of Manistique on County Road 149. It is one of six hatcheries operated by the Fisheries Division of the Michigan Department of Natural Resources and is open for tours. Thompson State Fish Hatchery was established in 1922 and was completely renovated in 1978. This facility can produce a wide range of fish species for both inland and Great Lakes waters because of its unique water supply. Cold water species produced at Thompson include Atlantic salmon, the only state fish hatchery to produce these fish, Chinook salmon, steelhead, rainbow trout, and brown trout. Cool water species produced at Thompson include both walleye and northern musculunge. This facility has both indoor and outdoor rearing capabilities. The indoor facility contains 42 tanks for rearing of small fingerlings. The outdoor facility contains 12 raceways for rearing yearling trout. Well, we told you we had the perfect follow-up to Eric, and that is finding out where all these fish are coming from. We met with Randy Espinosa, the fisheries biologist for Michigan's newest state-of-the-art fishery in Thompson, Michigan, just outside of Manistique. Randy gives us an exclusive tour. Randy, you brought us inside the building here. Maybe you can tell me a little bit about what this is. Yeah, happy to. So. This building was just built. Um, this, you know, we just took ownership in, in the, this spring of 2021, and the main purpose of the building here is to hatch walleye. So we, we get walleye as brood stock from Little Bay to Knock, you know, half hour down the road, and that occurs normally sometime in the month of April. And we bring those eggs here, and behind us here um, is a separate little room. This is our egg incoming egg room, and it's a whole separate area where we can disinfect the eggs, clean them up and then we pass the eggs through this window. Um, that way they're in a nice clean environment when they come over here and nothing gets contaminated in this side of the building. This is all full of water and the water will go come down through this tube. We put it inside of the, the jar with the eggs and the water has to go in here and the only way for the water to come out is out the top. We just turn this so that all the water is falling back into this trough behind it. Okay. When they hatch, they're swimming up and we, we add more flow and we kind of help them, help them along to push them out of there. And they fall inside of there and they get to go for a water slide ride, follow this trough to what we call a fry transfer pipe. They go inside of here, they get to go for that water slide ride and we're able to open valves and they can fall into a tank here or a tank there or tank there and we have other ones behind us they can go into as well. How are you getting them out of this tank then and getting them out to the pond? Ah, we have special little scoops, the really fine mesh net that we, we call like the chopsticks. You kind of stick it in and, and scoop them up. Okay, well let's take a look outside and see what, uh, see what the ponds look like. Sounds good. And Randy, maybe you can explain where we're standing and what the, how's this compared to the rest of it? Right, um, but this facility is mostly a walleye rearing facility. We, we hatch the walleye and we put them in the ponds behind us and after the walleye get raised and we stock them from these ponds, uh, we'll drain everything and refill water up and then we'll bring muskie in and then we'll, we'll raise those through the fall and then hopefully get them out of here there before, the, before it turns to ice. Um, the first pond behind us is a solar pond. That's just a pond where, our, where all the water goes into and actually warms up a little bit. So okay. when we want to add water to a rearing pond where the fish are at, we're not dumping in cold well water on top of them. The other ponds, there's six other ponds. Two of them are one acre ponds, and then four others are half acre ponds. They are much, you can see the size difference yes. in when you look at them, um, but in reality, they are the same volume of water. They're roughly about a million gallons of water. Uh, it looks like a good spot that birds might come down <laughs> and uh, eat some of these right, fish. What right. do you do about something like that? Right, so we're positioned right off, you know, we're only a mile and a half off of US too. So we have Lake Michigan right through the woods back there. And then we have Indian Lake, a big 8,000 acre, you know, lake just to our north. And so we got lots of birds. So what we have around each of our rearing ponds is a series of nets. So we have nets going up the sides, nets on the top. Oh, we don't want to yeah. have the birds come in and, and take all of them. Yeah, they'd our probably fish. eat everything. They would try, I'm sure. <laughs> the Manistique Boardwalk and Riverwalk 
extends 1.8 miles from the eastern city limits passing under the US-2 bridge into the downtown district. The boardwalk was first constructed in 1991 with several expansions and improvements taking place since. Built for visitors and residents alike, the boardwalk meanders along the sandy shores of northern Lake Michigan. Interpretive signs placed along this wheelchair accessible path inform visitors of the sights and natural elements around them. Along the way, enjoy the picnic area, fishing pier, and a photo perfect view of the East Breakwater Light. The picturesque red Manistique East Breakwater Light, located on the end of a concrete breakwater on the east side of the harbor where the Manistique River flows into Lake Michigan, welcomes travelers to the harbor town of Manistique. On a good day you can walk out to the lighthouse, but caution is strongly advised as winds and waves can be treacherous. Manistique has one of the most historic water towers in the country. On October 20, 1920, the 200-foot-high neoclassical brick water tower was constructed with a pumping station placed at floor level. Also, the dam at the site of the present pumping station was constructed and a 24-foot wooden gravity main was laid between the dam and the water tower. Located right next to the tower is the Manistique Historical Museum with artifacts dating back over a hundred years. Just to the south of the tower is the famous Siphon Bridge. This bridge was once in the Guinness Book of Records as the only bridge in the world that was kept up by water running underneath. Our circle tour continues through the wonderful little town of Manistique, where we will stop at the UP's newest attraction, Central Park. We are, we are in town, we're at an old rock quarry, and they have actually taken this quarry, and they didn't know what to do with it. It was actually kind of dangerous sitting over here, and they've turned it into a park, and what a magnificent job they have done. And as you can see, we, I'm standing on a platform here that you can look out across the park and across this little lake that's out here. And uh, there is a fishing pier at the other end. And I guess this could be used as a fishing pier too, because if you look down here, as a rock, rock quarries are, they're very deep. This is actually 50 foot deep. It's not a very big lake. And uh, out here, planted with all types of fish, the DNR have come in here and planted them with fish so you can go along the shoreline in a lot of spots and just fish if you want to. Great place to bring the kids down, the family, especially when you're staying here in town. You just got a beautiful day. You want to come out here and enjoy the parks and the areas. And, and it, you're not just seeing all of it here. We're going to show you the rest of it because we've got a beautiful beach over here. We've got tennis courts over there. We've got basketball courts over here. We've got a playscape for the kids. So there's just all kinds of things for everyone to do to, to come out to these areas and, and come around. You can see the beautiful rock uh, cliff-like areas that go along one side and it's gravel along the sand over here. I mean, just a beautiful park right here in the middle of the city. Another thing that you'll find here, if you like to come out and walk, we've got, there's a walk that actually goes right on around it, and I believe it's about uh, a half a mile around, so you go around it twice, you can put in a mile, and they are actually adding on now another trail that goes back into the woods, and you can see kind of in the trees behind me, and there's some hills back in there, there's going to be a nature trail that goes back in there that's going to be about four miles long, so a lot of trails out here too, that, and again, right in the middle of town. Another thing, geez, there's just all kinds of stuff here. We've got the, the Little Bear Arena, which is an ice arena, and they do a lot of hockey up in here, but they also use it for other things too. So, uh, and that's right here, right along the shores of this beautiful little lake. We started our day on Lake Michigan, and we have worked north, and we are now on Lake Superior. The spot we're at right now is the Pictured Rocks National Lakeshore, and out behind me is Miner's Castle Rock. We brought you to this spot many times in past shows, but we haven't been here now in quite a few years. There's been a major change since the last time we were here. If you remember the rock out behind me, there were two towers sticking up over there, but the erosion over the last couple of years has actually caused, caused the second tower to erode and fall into Lake Superior. So now there's only one tower that stands. Certainly no less beautiful than it was before, but uh, it is a little bit of a change, so if you haven't been up here in the past, you may want to get up here just to see that. Great day to be up here. We're going to end the day here. We had an eagle fly by just as we walked up here. They say you can look down on the water at times and see fish swimming around down there. We're probably 175 to 200 feet above the water on this platform right here. And so you get a real good view of this area. 
If you enjoyed today's show, we've put together a travel planner on our website, greatgetaways.tv. It gives you all the information you'll need to have a great getaway to remember. Here's what it contains. You'll find a video clip of each destination from today's show with a map and directions to each stop. It will tell you how much time to allow for each adventure, even what you should take with you. We have links to other hiking and travel maps along with links for accommodations, restaurants, outfitters, and even more attractions than we visited today. Just go to greatgetaways.tv and follow the links on our homepage.